A few weeks ago, I unlocked a new memory and haven't been able to let it go since. Naturally, I ran to Mercari, found the only listing that just happened to be posted yesterday, bought it, and prepared to script this video. This, my friends, is the 2001 Barbie Karaoke Cassette Player. The official title of it is the Sing With Me Karaoke Machine. I talk a lot about my childhood on this channel because I think that it's fun and also a good way to learn your true inner self and who you really really are underneath all of the required adulting that we all have to do and i have some very early core memories associated with this product and i i have this feeling about a lot of things but i have to say nothing defined the early 2000s for me more than this karaoke machine just staring at the listing photo had me feeling all sorts of magic and it was just amazing so picture this with me. It's 2001, a soft summer afternoon. It's warm and breezy, light pouring through an open garage door. The smell of fresh flowers and crab apple trees floats through your nostrils, marigolds, roses, and lavender. You're barefoot and carefree, feeling the warmth of a brick driveway. You ask your dad if you can listen to your favorite song, Take It on the Run by REO Speedwagon, and he pops it into this bad boy right here. When you get older, you tend to lose pieces of yourself. Things get harder, and you lose sight of what's really important. So then you start a YouTube channel. I genuinely have no idea where we originally got this thing as a child. I don't remember opening it on Christmas or seeing any of the many accessories that came with the player other than the player itself, so that kind of leads me to believe that we inherited it from someone else. But also, 2001, I was three or four years old, and that tracks for when this was released, so I'm not really sure how we got it. And generally, I remember this being a very, very good cassette experience. I mentioned frequently on this YouTube channel that I'm not into cassette. I think it's just gonna have to be the running gag at this point because my last two videos have been about cassette, and I surely can't shut up about something that I allegedly don't care for. I purchased this off Mercari, like I mentioned earlier, and I bought it with the assumption that it was working since it stated that on the listing. However, if you are not new to purchasing old electronics online, you know that working could be anything from yes, it turns on to um, it stays on for 30 seconds but doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do. A lot of times there isn't thorough testing done, so we are going to have to take a look. It also already came with a tape in it, which is really fun. We're definitely going to have to test this first. Everything analog in this unit, like the eject and the play button, seems to be in working order. The only thing we have to check now before we open up this unit later is the dreaded battery pack. This felt a little bit heavier than I thought when I got it, so I have a sinking suspicion that there are batteries in here, which really sucks because that increases the chance for corrosion. To my initial delight, I saw no batteries in the unit, but to my extra dismay, there is a ton of corrosion on the battery packs. We have it not only on the, the metal piece behind the spring, but the spring itself. It's one of the worst ones that I've personally seen, so that is a bit of a bummer and makes me feel a little bit on edge if this unit is actually going to work. There is also a DC power input, which we will get into in a second, and also something interesting called a volume limiter. I'm not really sure what that does, so if you guys in the comments know, I'm thinking maybe it's to reduce feedback and echo when you have microphones plugged in, but I just left that turned off. The power supply that it came with is one of those old bricks. I haven't seen one of these in a long, long time either. This is a 5 volt, uh, 120, well, okay. <laughs> this is a tangent, but in my last video, someone commented about the way I, I described the power supply and I think implying that I said it wrong. So I'll just leave the, the screen grab up there of the power supply. So I don't, uh, <laughs> don't name it incorrectly. Just a side note, I hate it when power cords are zip tied like this. Please don't do this. 
Something else that I like about this unit besides the beautiful bright colors, I think the color scheme is really cool. It's it's sort of pastel, which is reflective of the overall Barbie aesthetic in the early 2000s. The best part though, and I, I remember this as a child as well, this pink knob that controls the volume has the most satisfying clickiness to it. It is so, so satisfying. There's also like a bit of resistance when you actually turn it and it's just a nice touch. Now that we've briefly gone over this unit, let's see if the cassette that it shipped in contains any pre-recorded music or anything on it at all. Okay. That's nice. Okay, that kind of sounded like the song of the dead. I know that this boombox came with an echo and it does also have a recording function. Also, I'm going to keep calling it a boombox by accident, even though this is technically a karaoke machine. So apologizes in advance. I do not remember this particular effect, though, to slow the tape down. So I'm thinking this tape either sounds this way because of circuit bending or the more likely outcome is that there's damage to the tape. By the way, researching this boombox took me down an entire rabbit hole about circuit bending. I had never heard of this before, but there is a Blogspot article by Moxie Industries that I'll leave some screenshots of above here if you want to pause this part of the video and read about it. I'll also leave it in my description box down below because it's really cool. I guess you can use these simpler units to create different types of sound it's definitely not my style of sound but I still think messing with tech in any capacity is really cool so I figured I would bring that up as well Something else that is impossible to ignore about this karaoke player is the feedback buzzing loop. Eventually this does stop when you start playing a cassette or also um, if you insert a microphone. I do not have the original microphone. I have an eBay listing on my, my saves because I would like to purchase it and record, but I wanted to make sure that this unit was going to be reliable first. I do have this crappy little aux mic that I don't know, I found at the thrift store. It doesn't really work um, normally with newer technology, and unfortunately, as you guys will see here, it doesn't work on this karaoke machine either. Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello? Hello, 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 hello. Whoop, <laughs> I scared myself. There's also a really, really aggressive squeaking noise when I first started rewinding cassettes, but that eventually stopped, and I'm assuming it's just because this hasn't been used in several, several years.
What we're going to do now is test several tapes, including a prism tape that I used in my last boombox video that featured some cassette recording. I recorded some of my own original songs and also the Yamaha test songs that I use. In this video, it will just be the Yamaha test song, so nothing that I created. Next, we're going to do this unopened tape. This is a string of pearls, great songs of the 40s. I was excited to get this because it was new in the box and let's see how it sounds. There's also another really cool tape I have called Senior Prom. This was produced by Warner and I don't really know a lot about cassette. As you guys know, I'm working on it, but just off of first glance, this looks like a really high quality cassette or at least it's produced better than some of the other ones I've had. Feels heavier and that little like thing at the bottom, I don't know, to like loop the the tape through seems kind of high end. Um, I'm probably going to get co a copyright for this. Like this video is probably going to be demonetized, but I really want you guys to hear how amazing the audio quality is for such a tiny little karaoke machine. Now that we've done some demoing, of course, this wouldn't be a Yasmin Collects video if we didn't try to take this baby apart, so let's get a cracking on that. Sorry, Barbie. There are four screws on the back and two on the bottom. The four screws on the back weren't too bad, but those two on the bottom were really, really jammed in there, and it took me quite a bit of effort to actually get them off.
and here we have a detailed look of the inside I'm not going to pretend that I really know what I'm talking about here but I think I have the basics for you we have the power supply on the lower left speakers a ton of capacitors and also the buttons that control the analog compo components of the tape mechanism Speaking of tape mechanism, the actual player itself also looks great. Everything inside seemed clean to my untrained eye, and overall, looking at how, how nice everything appeared inside, I did not anticipate what would follow. I just want to showcase these fools because what they are so excited for, as if there's like a treat or something coming for them, is literally... I've got this going on here, and then I have a cup of tea that I'm drinking, and every single time I pull the cup of tea out, they're like, oh my gosh, is that for me? I spent a good chunk of time trying to put this karaoke machine back together again, as I always do in my videos. It's pretty easy to get things off, but snapping them back is a whole other situation. And when I went to demo this 1940s tape, unfortunately, this happened. So I took it apart and put it back together four times and then it finally snapped in correctly. After filming this demo, I enjoyed the senior prom tape so much that I decided to start it from the beginning and just listen to it for my own pleasure. So the camera wasn't recording when the tape suddenly stopped playing and the life of this karaoke machine was gone. Well, just as I raided the cellar and was enjoying myself so thoroughly, the box died. And um, this power adapter is super, super, super hot. It's, it's like concerningly hot. And I'm wondering if the feedback had anything to do with this power supply, if there's like something going on with this and if it would be better for me to put it in batteries, which the battery compartment is pretty corroded, so we're gonna have to clean that. Hello, it's editing me doing research on battery corrosion, and as I was watching this video to give it a final approval before upload, I noticed, and some of you probably also noticed, that you can see the corrosion from the back of this battery casing is directly connected to the power supply and the corrosion does not stop at the power supply so what's probably going to happen is I'm going to have to thoroughly clean the compartment on the outside and also open this back up and see if I can clean the interior. That's just at least my initial thought. This isn't a very satisfying conclusion to this video, but I have to say I would love to hear some of your expert and non-expert opinions on what may be going on here. Like I mentioned earlier, looking at the interior, it looked nice to me, but there may be some glaring issue that you guys saw that I just am not trained enough to look for. And I'm wondering if the feedback was a ground loop or something indicating that either the power supply was bad or it could have been incorrect, like it might have just been a random power supply that the seller found and it shorted out the entire unit. It could also go back to the fact that the, this battery compartment is super corroded. So I do most certainly have plans to clean the corrosion off, but I don't want to do that until I share this video and possibly get some input from you guys on other ways to troubleshoot. I'd really, really like to get this thing working, and I'm so heartbroken that <laughs> I only got to enjoy it for really the filming of this video in about 20 minutes afterwards. But regardless, the Barbie boombox will always be near and dear to my heart. Even if I can't use it, I will always have this in my collection just to stare at it and look at it and use it as a reference point for one of the few positive childhood memories that I do have. If you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel, Yasmin Collects. We do all sorts of different things on this channel. I like toys, I like media, I love VCRs and analogs and tapes and all that, all that jazz. So leave a comment, subscribe, let me know what you think happened with this Barbie unit, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!